And finally, new rule, if there's one thing we've learned from the crisis in Ukraine, it's that everyone loves and the world still needs grown-ass men. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Guys, look, you can go on about how masculinity is itself toxic, or you can be horny for Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky, but you can't do both. If you haven't noticed, the internet these days is filled with posts like, every woman in your life now has at least a small crush on Zelensky and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> if I'm being honest, Zelensky gives me a lady boner. <laughs> Badassery is sexy as fuck and I want to bang Zelensky. <laughs> Could it be that as much as women may want to create the perfect man, there's always going to be a little bit of toxic mixed in with our masculinity and no amount of training will turn us into your favorite Twilight character. <laughs> Masculinity is like coffee. Even when you decaffeinate it, there's still a little caffeine in there. <laughs> now, there's certainly no denying that there has been a lot of toxicity associated with men throughout history. Oceans of brutality, all of which is horrible and some of which is why our species still exists on Earth. There are brave women fighting in Ukraine, but the images of people fleeing all seem to be women and children while every able-bodied man in Ukraine is sticking around to fight and maybe die. It's not always a great advantage being a man. And toxic though we may be, we do sometimes come in handy. As much as you may not want to admit it, there's a direct correlation between all these lady boners for Zelensky and the fact that he's what people used to call a man's man. He can't share right now. He's killing Russians. <laughs> Turns out after 200,000 years, there's still a lot of another tribe is coming to kill us. And when that happens, you want a little big dick energy. <laughs> People Magazine's search for sexiest man of 2022 is already over. <laughs> Last year's winner was cuter, but this guy gets women actually hot. <laughs> so maybe now would be a good time for relationship gurus to stop saying that women just want a man who will listen. Because Zelensky, he's not just listening, he's fixing the problem. Yeah. This is... <laughs> This is something I've heard for years, that women just want a man who listens. Don't try to fix their problems. Put that to the test sometime. <laughs> Go over to her house tomorrow and fix her radiator. I bet she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> when there's a noise downstairs, someone has to go into the dark. And most women, yes, still, want a man to do it. And if he doesn't, or can't, or won't, it's not sexy. Ooh, a guy who can't perform. I'm melting. <laughs> no, you want the guy who says, I don't need a ride, I need ammunition. Because I'm John Wick. <laughs> who you also want to fuck. <laughs> And that's why we owe such a debt of gratitude to, Z to Zelensky. Forget making America great again. He's making America grind again. <laughs> I'd say wives are calling out his name during sex, but they aren't because wives aren't having sex, or husbands, or singles. Researchers have found that Americans across the board are at a 30-year low for sex. Half of Americans don't even have it once a month. 44% of adolescent males say they don't even masturbate. Males? What, are they afraid to touch their own dicks because a gym sock can't give consent? <laughs> Since the 1980s, American men have literally been losing their testosterone, with average levels declining by about 1% per year, along with declining sperm counts. One in, 
<laughs> One in four American adults have not had any sex in the past year, and you thought California was in a drought. <laughs> The question is why? Why this sex drought? Well, I think the answer might be that men are such pussies now that actual pussies want nothing to do with them. <laughs> it's the result of having it drilled into us in recent years that masculinity is itself toxic and scary and unevolved, and women don't like it. And the ones who think they do, they really don't. And if you think you do, you're wrong, too. What do you know about you? I think you're probably committing a microaggression against yourself right now. You owe you an apology. <laughs> Even the act of just asking a girl out is now seen by many younger people as overly aggressive. There's a feeling that the attributes traditionally characteristic of men are inherently problematic, which sounds a lot like men are born wrong. Type the phrase, men are trash, into Etsy, and you can purchase a slew of swag with that phrase on it. When the Obama administration was trying to sell Obamacare to a skeptical nation, they made an ad featuring someone who became famous as Pajama Boy. This is what they put out as an image of the perfect man. The only thing he loves more than affordable health insurance is his therapy cat and Emily in Paris. <laughs> That ad might as well say, ask your doctor if chemical castration is right for you. <laughs> Women have come a long way, baby, and the vast majority of that has been long overdue and very, very positive. But maybe in this one way, you're a victim of your own success. You can win the battle and lose the war if you harangue men into becoming less like us and more like you and end up with someone you have absolutely no desire to fuck. And that's not good for either of the 71 genders we now have. <laughs> Maybe what we need these days is more sex and less gender. <laughs> Women aren't attracted to these girly men they've created. The guy you whipped into total sensitivity isn't sexy to you anymore. There's a special place in a woman's heart for a man who learns to suppress his masculinity. It's called the friend zone. <laughs> And men, this is ultimately on you. She's not holding a gun to your head and making you a pussy. It's always your choice. Stop sulking. <laughs> Stop complaining that it's hard to get laid. Oh, you poor incels. Girls don't want to have sex with you unless you put in a little effort. So put in a little effort, you stupid, lazy fucks. <laughs>